special day of happiness and uh, joy for most of us, a lot of us, but it brings with it a lot of sorrow for a lot of mothers. And we want to lift up those moms today and just remind them that they are loved and that they are thought of. Um, there's mothers out there that are grieving. Maybe they've lost their mother or maybe they've lost a child. That's a, a hard loss, something that I can't personally say that I even understand what that feels like. But even past that, I mean, there's mothers that are suffering that maybe they've uh, dealt with an abortion in the past. It's not for us to judge them or to say whether or not they were, at the time, what was going on in their lives. We don't know. We don't know what happened. We don't know what brought that about. But we want to lift those mothers up in prayer today. Right. The mothers that have maybe lost their children. They don't have their kids living at home with them anymore. You know, maybe for something that they've, that choices of their own that's happened, that their children have been taken away from them. But it doesn't mean that they don't love those children that, you know, at some point in their lives when they were young, that they didn't think about having children, that that wasn't part of the plan in their lives. Right. So we want to remember those mothers, too, that are hurting today. Um, it's not our place, like we said, to judge to what brought them to that situation or, or that place in their life. But what we are called to do is to, to love them to lift them up and to pray for healing in their lives today. Right. And that's what we want to do today. We want to remember all of our moms out there and all the situations, good or bad, that are brought to them to where they are today. Right. So let's pray. All right. Amen. Yeah, I'll pray and then we'll get going. So, Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, like Cleo mentioned, we're just so thankful for the moms, Lord, and the moms that uh, are hurting today. Lord, we know that this... Mom business isn't, isn't all rainbows and sunshine, Lord. There's pain. There's Being a mom is a hard job, and it's difficult, and there's there's uh, heartache that happens, Lord. And so as as moms are here and, and our families and beyond here, um, Lord, we just pray for all the moms who who maybe it's not picture-perfect Brady Bunch family. Maybe it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Lord, we pray for the moms who are struggling, moms who are hurting, the moms who have lost children or lost their mother, or, or those of us that, you know, Whatever. I just lift all those moms up and ask for peace in this moment, Lord. And more than peace, I ask the peace that comes from you, Lord. Ask any mom that, that is struggling today apart from you, Jesus, I ask that you would use us to uh, to share some good news, to share some love and some light and hope, Lord. Uh, use us. Use, use Unhindered Church to reach, uh, reach those that don't know you, Lord. We're just so thankful for... Uh, we're so thankful for our hope that, that Lord, if we've lost our mom, if, if there's a child that was lost, that, you know, we know that if they're secure in you, that's not the end. Lord, we will see our moms again. We'll see our grandmoms again. We'll see if there was a child lost, we'll see them again in heaven. Lord, there'll be a, a glorious reunion that day. And Lord, we look forward to that. But today we rejoice in our moms. Mm -hmm. And we remember how special, how what a gift mm -hmm. you gave people with a mom. And so we glorify you. We rift up here. And Lord, I just ask that you would be with Cleo as she speaks and be with the other moms as they share and just glorify your name and all we do. We praise this in Jesus' name. And we all said? Amen. 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 All right. Well, today is Mother's Day. And today we celebrate all of our moms today. Um, we have a couple moms today that have offered or volunteered or been asked to to share a little bit today about a mom or what it means to be a mom or just motherhood. So we're going to welcome Julia up first. Praise the Lord. So, first I just want to start out that um, everybody that's pr been praying for Brother Gus, my adopted dad, Tuesday he got um, diagnosed with terminal cancer. They gave him 15 to 18 months to live. Man is such a liar. 
man is a liar. I have a Jesus, and he is a way maker. He is a... Anyway. He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. And he is the light of my darkness. And I know that he has plans. And I just ask that y'all just keep him in your prayers. But today's not about Gus. Today's about my mom and what it is for me to be a mom. My mom is one of the most beautiful, blessed people in this world. She has always been there for me no matter what. When I went through a bad marriage, she may not have liked him, but she took care of me and listened to every word that I had to say. She was always there. She never judged him. Even before we started walking with the Lord, she never judged. She taught me that, not to judge. I can listen to my children now and not judge them by the situations that they go through, but I can listen and help them through it. There's been a couple, uh, I went through the Bible and found a couple verses in Proverbs 31, 25 says she is clothed with, can't read my writing, sorry. <laughs> she is clothed with dignity and strength. She can laugh at the days to come. My mom taught me to laugh. She taught me strength and dignity. She gave that to me. I didn't know that it was in the Bible because I wasn't raised with the word. But she taught me those things, and it was through God. The strength that I have, I get it from her. She is such a strong woman, and I'm just so blessed to have her as my mom. She opens her mouth with wisdom and with teaching and kindness is on her tongue. Proverbs 31, 26. That's my mom. She speaks with kindness to everybody, not just some people, but to everybody. And that's what we need to be doing. As mothers, we need to spread that kindness and that love, that strength, that dignity, especially at this time right now, people. Proverbs 31, 28 and 29 says, her children rise up and call her blessed. My mom is truly blessed. I'm blessed. I have seven children. I didn't give birth to all of them, but they are all my children. I'm blessed to have every one of them. I will probably won't get to see, but maybe two of them today. But that's okay. I'm blessed because I know that they'll be thinking about me or they'll be calling me probably while I'm at work. But they'll call me today because I'm going to work at 2 o'clock. I didn't want to, but you know what? As a mother, we have to teach our children that you have to do what you don't want to do sometimes. And you just have to take that strength and move forward. Her husband will also call her blessed, and he praises her. Many women have done exactly, but you surpass them all. Mama, you surpass them all. I am so blessed beyond words to have you as my mom. And I hope you know that I love you. Yes, thank you, Julia. It is a blessing, isn't it, to be a mom and to have a mother that has uh, raised us in such a way. So next we'd like to welcome up Lori. Thank you. Hope everybody can hear me. Mm -hmm. um, first, I want to say thank you to Pastor Ben and Cleo for asking me to share today. Um, it's humbling and it's an honor to stand up here. And uh, thank you, Cleo. I want to wish you a very happy Mother's Day. And I want to wish all the mothers out there a 
could be a mom that gave birth to her children, a stepmom, which I am, a grandma, an aunt, a great friend, somebody that is special in somebody's life that raised up a child, that showed them the way. There's so many different ways that you could be a mother. You could be a dad. You could raise up a child that doesn't have a mother. So to moms and dads and whoever you are, I wish you a happy birthday because you are so important to God. As we read about in the Bible, and I'm just going to touch on a couple of moms in the Bible, and the first one we know of is Eve, who had two sons. Because God didn't want man to be alone, he gave him a woman, and the woman, Eve, was the first mom as we know. And if we read further in Genesis, we can read about Sarah, who desperately wanted to be a mom. And she all waited until she was 90 years old, <laughs> you know, when she, when she went, became a mom. And... You know, even so, even then, you know, you, when you desperately want to have a child, and there may be some wannabe moms out there right here, right now, um, I pray that God blesses you with children. I've been blessed with children. I have six children. I didn't give birth to them all. I've lost a son. We have six, we have 15 grandchildren. We are so blessed too. And, you know, God, God showed us the importance of a mother in the Bible, especially way up to when Jesus died on the cross. And during his crucifixion, he looked down on his mom. He had caring and concern for her. And he thought about her well-being, and he wanted her to be taken care of. So he said to his disciple in John, let me just read this a bit. Um, had to write it down. <laughs> Jesus had a mother, Mary. And during his crucifixion in John 19, 25, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. And when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. And we can only imagine what Jesus was thinking about on the cross. Here's his mother that, you know, had a spiritual uh, encounter with God and became pregnant with her son. And they take, care, they take care of each other. There's a mother's love that you just never forget. It's a strong love. It's a, a love that goes beyond when you're a mother, you give unconditionally. You, you get tired and worn out, but you still love. And you watch your children grow, and you still love them, no matter how they go and how they grow up. And we know the Bible says to train up a child in the way they should go. And I've only learned that from some very special people in my life, including my own mother that has passed. She was a very humble and kind woman, and people that know her know that she loved life, and she loved to laugh, and she was giving, and she was caring. And I have mothers here. My mom out there that I love you so much, Mom Bev, since you've been in my life, I've become the woman that I am today because of you, because of how godly you are, and you have, you're a praying woman, and you're a blessed woman, and I love you so much for helping me just be the woman that I am that you, you always think about all of us children, you do. Praise God for you. I'm so thankful that you're in my life and it was only God that miraculously put you in my life like a divine appointment. There is no mistake. I know that I am here because of you. I can stand tall. We've been through so much together. I thank you and I thank Betty. Betty is here, Betty. You're, you're a dear, dear friend, but like I said, there's some people that are more than just a friend, more than just a sister, more than just a daughter, more than just a mom because of how you love and have shown love to me in my life. And I pray that every, every daughter, every sister, every woman, every niece, every, every woman that knows how to love can show that kind of love like I have received. It's such a blessing to me. And I want to thank you all. And I want to thank you for being at Unhindered Church because this is where we grow and go and know that God is here. There's going to be no, no other day like today. Today is like one in a million. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but here we are in a crazy world. 
and we're doing the best we can. So I thank you all. Praise God. Yes, thank you, ladies. So I just uh, have a few things that I want to say. Should only take me about an hour or so. No, I'm just kidding. Just a few minutes. <laughs> but I thought it was kind of ironic that uh, Lori touched a little bit on exactly the thing that I was wanted to talk about a little bit this morning. You know, I think about uh, mothers and Mother's Day. You know, I think about my own children and how I've also been very blessed with five beautiful children, four daughters and a son. Um, hasn't always been easy. I think a lot of those mothers can attest to that, that, you know, there are those highs and then you have those lows and sometimes we don't always get it right, but we really do our best. When I think about a mother, sometimes I feel like there's a mother that gets overlooked sometimes. Maybe not always. Maybe that's just my perspective on it. But uh, and Lori touched a little bit on that. But I think about Mary for the Bible, Jesus' mother. Um, so Mary was a woman of great courage and character. Mary loved God very much, and she wanted to serve him with all of her heart. But imagine that Mary was just this poor little girl from an insignificant town. Probably had really no expectations that her life was going to be any more than what it really what it was. You know, maybe it was just, you know, getting up every day and doing her chores and cooking and, you know, cleaning. And that's what she really looked at her life to be, you know. But she did have this desire in her heart to serve the Lord and to do everything for him. So... I can just imagine the fear that probably came upon her when Gabriel, the angel, approached her and told her that she was chosen and favored by God to be the mother of his son. Could you imagine that, mom? Could you imagine just going about your business one day and cleaning your house and feeling like this is really what your life is? Not that it's a bad life. I mean, it's a good life. Things are good. And this angel appears to you and says, you are chosen and you are favored by God to carry his son. So despite her fear that I'm sure she felt, she responded with great courage. And she said in Luke 1, 31, it says, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you said come true. That right there, that very first part took me because I want to be a lot like Mary. You know, I want to be that mother. I want to be able to say that whatever you have for me, Lord, I want to do it. Here I am. I am your servant. Take me. Use me for whatever it is. Oops. Ignore my phone ringing. <laughs> so it, it, it talks about the Bible that Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem that year for the census, which is very ironic that this is the year of the census. I just thought that was kind of neat that that was happening, but which in itself is extraordinary. Just a little side note, you know that Micah 5.2 has prophesied that this was exactly what's going to happen and that um, Jesus was going to travel to Bethlehem and that was going to happen. So if you read back in Micah 5.2, that was actually prophesied, which I thought was pretty neat too. But the travel itself had to be really hard for Mary. Imagine, moms, if you can remember back to when you were pregnant. I know I can, <laughs> maybe because I did it five times. But that last week of pregnancy, imagine you're in your last week. Now you're going to get on a donkey and you're going to travel. And it says that they probably traveled about 10 miles a day. Now me and Ben and the kids sometimes, we'll get on our bikes and we'll go out and bike rides. And we've traveled 10 miles a day. And I'm going to tell you right now, when I'm off that bike, my bottom side hurts so bad. I can't hardly get, get back on the bike the next day if we try again. It's painful. And we're just going on, I'm going on an easy bike. I mean, I got a nice road bike, so we're taking pretty, you know, level ground. So imagine if you're nine months pregnant with a baby, you're traveling 10 miles a day on the back of a camel. And it says that 
during this time, during this travel through Judea Desert, I might have pronounced that wrong, but it was uh, during the winter time. And you think that, oh, during the desert is probably nice and sunny weather, but it actually wasn't. It actually was kind of erratic this morning that it's pouring down, raining and cold. I leaned over to Ben and I said, well, this is just a lot like the day that Mary traveled. It was cold. It was probably raining every day. So imagine that you're pregnant. You're nine months. You're on the back of a donkey. You're riding 10 miles a day. And it's pouring down rain and you're freezing. I don't know about a lot of you moms, but I know Ben can contest to this. I would already be jumping ship. I would be complaining and griping the whole way. I would have already given up. I would have already said, make me a fire. I'm done. I'm done. But Mary didn't. She pushed through. Like a lot of us mothers do. No matter the circumstances or how rough it is or how tough it is, that's what we'll do. We'll push through. We'll travel. We'll put in the hard work. That's what we do. Even unnoticed. A lot of times it goes so unnoticed for a lot of moms. How hard of the work that we put in every day, all the time. So we know that Jesus was, uh... oh, <laughs> I put a little side note on here, just something else that was really funny I was thinking about. <laughs> when I was pregnant with Brody, we were at Walmart, and uh, if any of you moms ever had a sciatic nerve that hurts in your back, you know it's about paralyzing. You really can't move, you really can't walk. So we were at Walmart, and Ben made me get on a scooter at Walmart. Well, I didn't want to get on the scooter at Walmart, but he was making me. But So as we leave Walmart, I can't even make it from Walmart door out to a pole. So I'm literally leaning on this pole. I'm paralyzed. I can't move. And Ben's grandparents at the time pull into Walmart. Of course, they pull up, and they're like, what are you doing leaning on this pole? And I'm trying not to scare them, you know, but I'm just like, oh, fine. It's good. It's good. But I thought about that a lot, too. It made me laugh. I thought about poor Mary, the things that she had to go through with that travel. But when we don't read a lot about Jesus growing up in the Bible, I mean, there are some, some references to it, but I am sure that Mary had a lot of the same dreams that we as mothers do for our children. Oh, this might get me just a little bit... <laughs> The other day I was uh, watching my son Brody. I stood on the back door and I watched him playing outside in the dirt. And as I'm watching him play in that dirt, I, I started to think about Mary and how many times she probably leaned out and watched Jesus play in the dirt. And I thought about Bella. She brought me this beautiful cup that she made me for Mother's Day. Isn't that beautiful? It's got all these flowers on it. Whoops, on this bottle. She worked really hard on this, I'm sure. So I thought about Jesus, and I'm sure, I mean, he doesn't say it, but I like to think that Jesus probably did that a lot for Mary. Brought her little gifts, maybe for Mother's Day, and you know, gave her lots of hugs and kisses and told her how much she, she loved him and how special she was to him. I don't believe that Mary knew exactly what was going to come of her son. I mean, but I know that what the scriptures do tell us about what she did know is huge, and I want to reference a few of those. In Matthew 121, it says that he will have a son, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Matthew 123, it says, Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And the last one is Luke 132, 33. It says, He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his ancestors, David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will have no end. But scriptures don't really show that Mary knew in detail of which her son would have to suffer for all. And I thought about that, and I thought about that day that Mary came to Jerusalem, you know, and she came there for the Passover. That was why she had come there. It wasn't really to watch her son suffer, though she did. And I can imagine that the heartbreak would be unimaginable. When I read about that, I think again about my children about how the heartbreak would be unmanageable to watch your child suffer like that. And I think a lot of us mothers have had to watch our children suffer 
some unimaginable things. But through all this pain and suffering, she would experience the greatest joy of her life. She was there to watch her son resurrected. And that's a beautiful thing, right? And I, when I read that, I thought how important it was really for Mary to watch her son suffer. And then I thought about my kids, and I thought if something, my children were to suffer through something great, and then at the end of this, he was resurrected. What a beautiful thing it is for her to see that, to see the suffering of her child, but to see the beautiful resurrection of the end. I mean, Jesus was born her son, but he died as her savior. And that's beautiful. Right? So Mary is one of the bravest, strongest, courageous, humble mother that I've ever read about. You know, a lot that plays a lot in our lives with our children. You know, ultimately, in reality, they're not really our kids. I mean, they are his kids. And at any time he chooses, they're going to go home to be with him. But the time that we do have them, I mean, we are called moms to such a high standard that sometimes I think we forget that and overlook that. We go about our daily life and our, oh, the kids are crying or they're complaining or they need this and they need that. You know, it's so much more than that. You know, we are called to raise these children up, to teach them the scriptures, to show them the love of God through us. I mean, if they're ever going to see a better example of his love, they're going to see it through mom. You can see the way we live, the way we speak to our kids, the way we speak to our friends. So it's such an extraordinary job that we can never take lightly. And we are blessed. I mean, we are blessed beyond words. So let's honor and pray for all of our mothers today. In Leviticus 19, 1 through 3, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the entire community of Israel. You must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must grow great respect for your mother and your father. I just want to leave you with that today, that it is a tough job, and we do have a hard road ahead of us. And from the beginning, from when we give birth to these kids until we have to let them go, I want to know that through this that I've done you know, what God has called me to do through my kids. And I haven't always got it right before in the past. And maybe some of you are in the same boat with me, but you know what, we can't, we can't look back at that. We can't look back at the what ifs we had done it's today. We can start today. As moms, we can start today by filling our children with the love. The love that Mary showed, and the courage that Mary showed through all those desperate times. I love you all, and happy Mother's Day. Amen. Wow. We got a new preacher up here. <laughs> Excellent job. Good job. And good job to all the women that shared this morning. You know, it's so special. It's so special that uh, you, you had the heart to come up here and share a little bit this morning. We, we love you guys so much. So um, we have some business to take care of. Let's pray. And then we got some business to take care of. So Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful for, we're thankful that the rain broke, Lord. We're thankful that this is your day. And, uh, and Lord, you let us see our moms and, and our wives and, and all the church sisters here, Lord, let us see them this morning and, and, and just lift them up to you, Lord. We're so thankful for each one of them. Lord, let us be, a, let us honor our moms, not just today, but just all the time. Let's, let's just make that our default setting, Lord, and respect our moms and teach our kids to respect our moms. And, and Lord, we just know that we don't have our moms forever. We, we're going to know that. Um, and so while we do have them, we'll let us love them right, love them well, and, and uh, serve them well, the way Jesus served his mother. Pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, moms. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to try and say the same thing. Yeah. Before you leave today, moms, we have a special guest gift for you. If you want to come up here and pick out a flower basket for yourself. Make sure you take one. They, uh, they are awesome flowers, and they're right down the street here from uh, the Northside Market. So... We're supporting a local business, and it's a great, it's a great uh, set of flowers here. I don't know, they're all different, but they're pretty. So Amen. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your day.
Yeah, have a great day. Happy Mother's Day. And don't forget your flowers. You're so loved. You're so loved. We'll see you soon.